Hey guys, welcome to the final video in my Summer Direction Crochet Along. This is the interlocking version. And really this should be starting at row 161 for the top border lines, but I wanted to quickly go back one row, just one row, because row 160 has a bit of a star. And the star, I'm hoping you guys have figured it out. I did mention on the previous video to pay attention to row 160. I am at 160. Right now is 160. And it says, right, wrong side, accent, color, front. And then a star. And why is that a star? Because every other right side row, or sorry, wrong side row, every other wrong side row puts that accent color to the back. And that kept our lines nice and straight. And this, because it's the very top, we want it to match this bottom where that line goes across. It just locks everything in. So this time we're bringing those accent tails to the front before we do the rest of the row, just like normal. So I hope you don't have to pull anything apart. I hope you were able to see that that was there. So now it says one back and nine in the front. And I, I figured it's just one row, so I'll just include it in this video instead of making like an, a completely separate chevron B section, right? And of course, this one, because it's all across, it, you don't really need to count them. And if you're just joining in and you're like, what is she talking about? You need to go to my other videos to find the rest of the crochet along. And if you're new to the technique, go to a learning video. Because this Summer Direction Crochet Along videos, they all, they just sort of jump into it. They assume that you've done interlocking at least once, that you've tried it, that you understand the concept of it. And then the videos are just for going through the pattern, okay? So we're at the end. The star repeats don't really matter, but... So we did uh, in the stars, is nine in the front. And then we have one in the back. And that's basically the whole row is, is the same as every other thing you've done, right? That part shouldn't be confusing. It was just where you put your tails. So now we are actually starting the section that says top border lines. And it's really short. You can see this is where we have everything. We're going to be using the accent color first. And it says chain three in front. Of course, um, I flipped it, so now it's confusing you again. Sorry, guys. Um, let's do this backwards here. So now it says chain three in front, which if you had put your tails on the wrong side, you would have this on the wrong. And then it says nine in the front. Of course, you don't really have to count. And outside of the star is also another stitch in the front. So you really super duper don't have to count because the end stitch is also in the front. Everything is just in the front. We're all on the same side here because it's creating that stripe across the top so that the top and the bottom, top and the bottom border matches. And this section really is basically like the opposite of your foundation rows. Very simple for us now. We've done the whole pattern. Now we're just doing two rows. So I'm also going to include a quick little uh, suggestion for how to do the border. Um, let me finish counting this. So it is weird when you're doing the end stitch in front. It feels like you're going into nowhere. So There you go. Now it says cut and tie off your accent color, which is one of the most exciting pieces for me because I'm like, wow, we're done. It's amazing. So what I do, um, I finished my stitch and I cut some and I pull it through. That makes it all. I leave my tail long because if I make a mistake and I have to pull it out, I'd rather have a long tail and then I just cut extra at the end. <laughs> now it says we're working from the right side. There's no more tails to worry about. They're just done. We're going to chain three. We're going to put one in the back and then we have star telling us to do your repeat. They're all in the back. So really just everything is in the back, right? Those stars don't matter at this point. And we're getting so close to finish. Do you have a rush when you're at the end? You're like, okay, I'm so close to being done. I just want to go fast, fast, fast. I always seem to race myself when I'm done. It's like I see the finish line and I give it that final burst of quick, which is usually why I make a mistake. The last project I did, I had to take out like two rows because I got so excited about being done. I was like, ah, Ashley, you should know better. <laughs> 
So you can see that we've made this line all the way across, including across our border lines. Those three lines on the side have been interrupted and it's just for this top row. So everything's in the back. Of course your end stitch is still on the side. There's no change there. So you can see that it now matches the bottom. And that is like the entire pattern. We did it. Yay! Now in the pattern, it says you have the option of doing a single crochet border. You can see that it is finished. There's no rough edges or anything. If you wanted to do the single crochet border, which I do find makes it look better. All I do is I chain one just to give me some space. And then I put two single crochets into all of these windows. And it's quick for me. I just go in the big gaps and away I go. However, I, I have noticed not everyone likes to do this. They either, they think that it doesn't really add much, which I mean, it doesn't, it's not much, but it's just enough to, to make it stronger on the edges. The other issue that some people have mentioned is that it kind of makes this gap bigger. And I'm not sure about it making it bigger, but it, in, it could be fixed. Okay. So I'm going to show you one other way to do it. There are other ways. If you see other designers doing things, go ahead, do whatever you like. It's your border, make it beautiful. But here is one option that I have been fooling around with. I take only one loop. So that's kind of, it stretches it out a bit and I go through and I just do the single crochet as if I was doing the regular border that I've suggested in the pattern. And every other time, so I did, I did through the green one and then I just did in the purple. And now this one, because it's a green row, there's like a loop on the front here. And if you can get into that loop and then go under your purple, it kind of holds things tighter against, but I don't like to do too much of it. So I do every other stitch where I pick up something from the green on Every other row, because you remember how we were doing the starting chains, it goes chain three, but then at the end you were just going into the gap. So it actually can move around. So that would be what I did here. That was the chain three gap. This one is an actual stitch. There's no wiggle in. So I still just take one loop. If you go through two, then I find it makes it too gappy again. And that's been my newest trick. I don't know if it's a trick really, but that's what I'm thinking of it is. I kind of just take one loop. I still go through the purple and I'm still doing just single crochet. I've seen half doubles and things like that. I'm still just doing single crochet. It's just that I'm grabbing one loop of my accent color as I go, but it does keep things just a little tighter so that this piece doesn't get pushed up. It kind of seems like it gets pushed up when there's too many stitches, whereas now it's locked in. So that's my trick. I don't know if you are going to find it too complicated or annoying. It definitely takes me longer than just putting those single crochets in the gap hole, right? Gap hole. I don't know if that's a very nice word, but um, I'll do some just to show you the difference. So it goes much quicker for me to just find the hole. And I put two in because it's the height of a double crochet, right? And that's how you do borders usually. And when you're laying it down, there's really not a whole lot difference. I mean, it's still dark, light, dark, but this one is just wigglier. I don't know. I have been liking it lately. It takes me longer, but I do find that now I'm preferring that. In the corners, I find, um, well, when I started, I put it in the very corner and then just into the purple space. Then I did like the stitch and then a purple space kind of thing. That's what I've been doing. Then when you come around the corner this direction, it's been like into the stitch and then in the purple space. And then the very final one, I just go in the stitch area. And then that final one, I try not to use the same, the same loop because I find it stretches it out too much. So I usually try to find some other loop in the back. The loops are pretty stretchy. I think you'll be surprised if you're pulling things around and you realize, oh yeah, they go anywhere. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys that final, um, the corner thing that I was talking about. So you can see this is the, the stitch that comes up. I try to grab 
something either on the front here it stretches quite a bit sometimes i take kind of this loop i don't know i don't know if it's like it's not really a a real stitch for at the moment it's more like a work in progress weirdo thing that you can try to copy so you're gonna all ask me questions like where did you put your stitch and i'm gonna be like i don't know i tried to be consistent but i don't really know so anyways once i get to the corner so i put one in the stitch and then another one just in the purple and then in the corner because i want the actual corner to be locked in i do the stitch first and then grab something but i don't grab the yarn that's already in the other one because then it pulls too much i go to the back and i find something that looks like it could stretch up and then i just make sure that i have one loop of something in the back that can sort of stretch it up i don't know it's kind of willy-nilly maybe you're going to be like she is weird why do i even follow her whole thing get to the end of this crochet along and find out just how weird this lady is that's what it does though anyways so i need my scissors which i don't have here so now i'm going to pause my show okay i uh got my scissors and then you can get a little like a darning needle to weave the tail back in a few times so that's still on my list i have to do this tail as well but i wanted to be able to show you that that is it that's the crochet along here it is the bottom tail i have to do that one as well <laughs> we did chevron a wrong side right side the arrows chevron a again then chevron b different arrows a and b of course they all changed another set of arrows more b then our border all the way around that's the crochet along mine's a scarf i don't know what yours is going to be these little edges you can see how they are locked in a bit better this is something I've done before. This is what I mean, that it kind of makes a flap, which when it's just sitting, I don't think you can really notice, but maybe you don't like the texture of that and you want it to be locked in. That's the difference. That it is, my crochet along, I'm done. I'm so excited. I'm gonna, now I have to go do the videos for the mosaic version. <laughs> maybe some of you will be doing both versions as well. Maybe uh, you're gonna be doing a blanket of this. Maybe you're gonna stick to the scarf. I, I'm excited. I'm really excited, guys. I know it's the end and I should show you the excitement at the beginning, but here I am. It's at the end and I'm excited. So thanks for watching. Thanks for playing along. Hopefully you learned something or enjoyed yourself maybe a little. I don't know. Just uh, thanks for being here. <laughs>